Hello there, my name is Niklas Amerson and I'm the head of product management for Spotfire and I'm going to present what's new in Spotfire 12.4. We consider Spotfire to be a full-spectrum analytics platform. Spotfire is used across all analytics and BI use cases, and we bring one single experience for self-service data visualization, for carefully designed dashboards, data preparation integrated with visual analytics, but also traditional reporting, such as generating PDF reports, For data science with many built-in capabilities, but also tightly integrated with Python and R for customization. For analytic applications that are purpose-built, like this one for predict predictive maintenance of equipment. And mobile BI for people on the go. And since Spotify 12, you can now act on insights directly from the visualizations. And to support all these use cases, Spotfire lets you use all kinds of data. Static data, data in real time, big or small data, in memory or in database data, cloud data, data in catalogs, train data, and importantly, in any combination. Spotfire 12.4 brings new features in data access, visual analytics, data management and data science, and analytic applications. So let's start with data access. A number of improvements have been done to the information services logging in recent releases to allow administrators to more easily monitor the usage and do troubleshooting. So the data source name is now logged when a connection fails. The data source name is now logged along with the SQL query. The number of rows processed when ex executing an information link is now logged and new configuration option to set the maximum number of stored procedure input rows to log. This allows for better usage monitoring and troubleshooting. And there is also a new tool for JDBC data source template validation. So you can more easily validate a JDBC data source template by using a command line tool that performs a test connection to the external data source with the settings specified in the data source template. This test can help you assess if the data source template is valid and if it's compatible with the data source under JDBC driver before you add the data source template to the Spotfire configuration. Looking into data management and data science, uh, the new Data Canvas sidebar enables accessing data tables and data functions more easily. So you can quickly switch between data tables, access data functions and navigate through your data. So let's look at how this looks in Spotfire. So here you see the data canvas sidebar. You can navigate between the data tables and the data functions and you can collapse and expand the sidebar as needed to maximize your working space. This feature is particularly useful when you work with large numbers of data sets, as it allows you to quickly switch between the tables and data functions without having to navigate through multiple menus. You can now also add and view column descriptions directly from the data in analysis flyout to easily document the purpose and the meaning of the data columns, making it easier for you and for others to understand your analysis. So simply open the data in analysis flyout, select the column and navigate to the data tab uh, where you can enter a description for the column. In the data science space, we have seven new data functions available on the exchange now. So the nearest neighbors finds locations in a given data set that are closest to other locations. The distant ma distance matrix computes distances between two collections of locations. The fuzzy string match finds approximate string matches between two columns and gives a ratio of their match. 
The spatial join finds the data in one marker layer that is nearby data from another marker layer. Convert lines to points converts line geometries to a set of points. And export to shapefile exports a data table with geometries to a shapefile on a local drive. The linear interpolation finally takes any number of numerical columns and interpolates missing values. So let's turn to visual analytics. Web authors can now change the visualization axis to column from marked data, making it easier than ever to create interactive visualizations that change what column is used for an axis depending on what is marked in other visualizations. So let's again see a short demo. So here we have a data set from the OECD about life satisfaction. And I've used column from marked, which means that even consumer users can now change the axis of the visualization, but just by simply by marking in the uh, in this table here so what's happening is that the column from marked actually picks up the column that i'm marking in this table and uses that on the x axis so let's see a little bit how that is built if i click on the column selector here I can edit the column for mark configuration that I've already done uh, and we can see here that what I do is that I specify that when the user marks in this data table we take the value from this column which is here in the table uh, and I'm using a specified marking for this uh, so that means that I press O Okay, we are back here and I can again show you how the column from marked works. So this is a good and easy way to give more flexibility to consumer users who cannot use the column selectors on the visualizations to select which columns that should be visualized in a certain visualization. There are also new visualizations available on the exchange. So the scatterplot matrix is a graphical tool that uses multiple scatterplots to determine the correlation, if any, between the sets of variables. So the scatterplots are then organized into a matrix, making it easy to look at all the potential correlations at once. The Pareto chart was built by a team of students from the Gothenburg University. Uh, Pareto charts highlight the most important uh, factors among uh, a set of typically many factors by combining both bars and line charts with individual values represented by bars in descending order and the cumulative total represented by the line. These charts are useful when analyzing data where many courses of action are competing for attention. For instance, when indicating the frequency or the cause of problems and their cumulative impact. So Pareto charts helps you find the problems to prioritize in order to observe the greatest overall improvement. The intelligent narrative mod was made by our partner Aria and enables to instantly generate natural language insights to describe visuals in Spotify analyses or any data in a data set and allows users to have a conversation with the data with access to instant insights and deeper details using natural language. We also have an update to the list visualization. So this visualization is used to display a selectable list of unique values in a columnar hierarchy. Uh, so what we've added is searching and sorting capabilities and now we have a new update that removes the row limit and natural sorting and improves performance when switching the sorting. So let's see a short demo on this mod. So here we see the list mod to the left where we have um, uh, locations organized by region and state and I can 
select a region like this and the visualizations on the right respond to that. But I can also select at the lower level uh, the, uh, uh, the state level. So it's a nice and easy way to selecting uh, categorical values from the data using the list mode. In addition, uh, I also want to let you know that we have made 26 of the visualization mods available on GitHub uh, together with the source code. So this means that the source code of these 26 visualization mods is available for anyone who wants to extend and modify the mods. So let's look into analytic applications and the feature in this space is the easier to use external actions with the help of type support. So when configuring or running an external action, you will now get a more suitable UI controls for each parameters depending on the data type. For example, you can use drop down lists where you choose from predefined values. You can have checkboxes and numeric input controls with validation of the input range in addition to text field, uh, text field input fields. This makes it easier for people that are using the analysis to know what type of input is expected and reduces the likelihood of issues when the action is run. So let's see a short demo. So here we see the user selecting data and triggering the data. Uh, and as you can see, there is some validation of the input values. You can enter a comment and you can select from a predefined list of input values. Spotify 12.4 is a mainstream release. We have new mainstream releases approximately every second month, and these are dedicated for those of you who want to get the latest features and enhancements as quickly as possible. If you are on a long-term support release like 11.4 or 12.0, these are still under support and are not affected by this mainstream release. Uh, you may still find it interesting to hear about our mainstream releases though, because what's new in these releases will be part of the next LTS release. And speaking about LTS releases, I also want to take the opportunity to tell you about the change in our release planning. From now on, we plan to have LTS releases in September every year. So that is a change from June as it was previously. Now we are targeting to make LTS releases in September every year. And before I end, I want to make sure you're all aware of the ID portal. The ID portal allows you to share your product IDs and enhancements directly with Spotify product management and vote on IDs submitted by other users. Also, when you vote on an ID or create an ID, this means that you will get notified when the ID changes its status. Thank you. I hope you like the capabilities that we've added in Spotify 12.4 and hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.